Gog in a Thousand Year of Darkness. That is quite a bold title and a bit gloomy. I was gonna do the show on camera just like the crypto one, but uh, my cat had some problems and I'm not really uh, presentable at the moment. Yes, it's possible for me to look worse on camera, so I thought I'd make this video like in the old days when there'd be nothing of relevant present on the actual screen, just a disembodied voice that periodically forgets how the word specifically is pronounced. What is the meaning of this title apart from it being clickbait? Well, at the end of last year, CD Projekt posted its, you know, quarterly, yearly financial situation for its investors and there was a, uh, a bit of a disconcerting, even depressing statement included there, which is that GOG is losing money and it's been losing money for some time. In total, year to date, GOG has posted a net loss of $2.21 million. Now, it's also made $1.21 37 million dollars but it still lost 2 million dollars. CD Projekt itself made about 30 million dollars which is nice but GOG basically did not turn a profit unless I'm reading these things wrong which is a possibility since I'm not an accountant or smart. That to me is very alarming. I mean, apart from the fact that I'm an idiot, because GOG is essential. If you've been in video games, in PC video games for like a decade at least, then you know what GOG means. Yes, there will be the Steam diehards who proudly announce that if a game isn't on Steam, it may as well not exist. I'm not making up a straw man here. I I've seen these arguments made against games that were not published on Steam years before the Epic Game Store existed. But regardless of what, what I had hoped was just a small portion of people believed that Steam is the only choice they have, GOG is an important part of gaming, of the, the market. It's not a big part. I mean, the pie, uh, the last time I actually looked at the pie, there was Steam, a chasm so large that you could fit the Titanic, then GOG, and I think it was Gamer's Gate. If you don't know, uh, th that site doesn't have any relation to do with the, well, the shit show. Uh, it, it was named way before it. Uh, it was actually harassed because of its name by the anti-harassment people. Should probably make a video about that one at some point. That would really kill the channel. But anywho, GOG was never a big player. It was small. And that was a problem. You see, when GOG started out, it was good old games. It was a service created with the idea of, hey, why can't I buy Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 anymore? Why aren't they playable on modern systems without excessive tinkering? Why isn't anybody selling them? And lo and behold, some people from Poland decided, you know what, let's do that. Let's get those games back on the market, let's get them playable, and let's shoot ourselves in the foot at every opportunity. GOG has made a lot of blunders over the years. It, it basically began with a blunder. Right after it came out of beta, or out of that limited sign-up thing it had, there was an announcement that it's shutting down. That was their idea of a joke. And they uh, made penance, I guess. They dressed as monks, like two of the people at GOG dressed as monks and asked us for forgiveness, like on their knees, praying. It was stupid, as stupid as the initial joke, but that was just the start. GOG was founded on the idea of not treating PC gamers like crap, which is something that well, the industry was doing. Even with Steam on the rise, the industry was doing it hard, frankly, not just PC gamers, but gamers in general. If you're not from the European Union, from Europe, as Cowan Chicken would put it, you may not understand that when a game is priced around here, it's not priced at the value it has in the US or in the UK. It is priced at the false idea that one dollar is equal to one euro. It is not. The value of one euro is greater than that of one dollar. We kind of wish it was the other way around sometimes. I mean as consumers, 
thankfully it's not as bad as uh, what happens in Australia from time to time with their games costing a hundred Australian dollars which is not a hundred US dollars it's less but it's still equivalent to around 60 euros. GOG came up with the novel idea of not doing that. Games were priced at what was it at first I think 7 and then at 10 euros and that was it. For what few games they had those were the prices. They were cheap. They were prices that people like the ones that founded GOG and CD Projekt could have probably afforded in their youth. Prices for well, us, for me, people for whom 300 euros a month is a decent wage. And not only this but you didn't have to be online to activate these games. You didn't need to. These were good old games. You didn't need DRM that's checking a server for a good old game because they didn't have those back in the day. They had code wheels and Star Force and Securum and other nightmares which were stripped from these versions. They were cracked with the blessing of the studios that made them and the publishers that shoved DRM down our throat for a very long time. And for a while it was beautiful. Just these three pillars of old games working again, fair pricing and no DRM, GOG found its niche. Unfortunately, a niche is not enough to sustain a store that has an active game development component tied to it. Because GOG maintains these games, ensuring that they still work on newer systems. It doesn't manage to do it all the time. I mean, Rage of Mages 2 does not work, well, did not work on my currently non-functional RX 480, but for the most part it does, and that is costly. So costly that at one point they decided that they couldn't have just good old games, so they started selling Assassin's Creed and newer titles, and eventually dropped the good old games name actually. Now GOG refers to GOG, it's self-referential, it's like GNU. It needed to attract new business in order to succeed. And by succeed I mean still be able to do what it set out to do. Provide old ass games that very few people care about. At least in the grand scheme of things. If we're talking about Poland, Ukraine, Romania, Russia, Hungary, Czechia, Slovakia, you know, this area of the world, we love them. We're insane for them. There are people that are still actively developing Heroes of Might and Magic 3 with a fervor that makes Ubisoft's efforts to, you know, remaster the game seem puerile and, well, at the level of Blizzard and their, you know, uh, Warcraft 3 attempts. But with just us alone, it couldn't sustain itself. So there came the newer titles and eventually it became a lot about the newer titles. Once the game was out, it was out on every platform. It was on Steam, it was on Xbox, it was on GOG as well. They won, but they couldn't keep doing the whole uh, price thing for long because they had to compromise and compromises well compromise is a tricky situation what do you do when you know you're gonna have to break one of your promises in order to keep fulfilling the rest of them do you give in or you know keep trying and eventually possibly fail gog gave in and 60 euros was now a price you would see on GOG. To a certain degree it made sense, they could not, I mean, they could not price those games cheaper because that would screw up a lot of things in terms of how the uh, online gaming store economy works. And doing that is just, they, they don't have the resources to do that, simply put. Steam is the giant Godzilla monster that will stomp you to death. Best you could do is keep your head down, do what everybody else is doing, don't rock the boat. And yet, we still have the amazing idea of no DRM. And Gog actually had a neat campaign called Fuck DRM. And I think that's my swearing quota for this video if I want to monetize it. But... And it's a big but. Since it wanted to compete with Steam, GOG released its own utility, its own launcher, GOG Galaxy. It gave you multiplayer, it gave you achievements, it gave you chat, it gave you stuff you don't need to play Fallout, but it did also mean that some old games had working multiplayer again through it. And it also meant that although GOG Galaxy was not DRM, it 
accustomed people to using a launcher for their GOG games. And that was a bit of a dangerous precedent. If you do that, the next step is DRM. And that's what happened. They released Hitman, which is a DRM game. It's a, well, I wouldn't say a live service game since they don't make content for it anymore. They make content for Hitman 3, which includes Hitman 2 and 1. But it needed the game's servers to be fully playable. And so, one after another, every pillar fell. It only happened once with DRM. And they've deleted Hitman off the site. It's no longer available there because of the backlash. Because they broke their promise of no DRM. They basically broke the reason GOG existed. And they have quite possibly suffered because of it. Being a niche platform with not a huge install base compared to Steam or even the Epic Game Store. Pissing off your core audience would possibly lead to those missing two million dollars in revenue. But and here's the big but. COG needs to exist. They need to be reminded, and they have been reminded, that DRM free is essential. It doesn't matter if they went back on all their other promises. DRM free is something that intentionally few other services provide. Steam sometimes does it, but not always. The Epic Game Store does not do it for DLC. A lot of the core games still don't have DRM unless it's specifically implemented by the developer with their own servers like you know like, like what Rockstar is doing. Origin is for you know EA's games, Uplay is an absolute disaster, I actually think they call it Ubisoft games or Ubisoft Play now. Honestly the only other service that is quite possibly DRM free would be itch.io because even Gamersgate has transitioned mostly to using Steam. It's, for the most part it's selling Steam keys and when it did sell its own game I mean, games that were not for Steam, they had DRM in it. I remember that. I, I still. <laughs> I still have all of my Stronghold games downloaded and I think even my D&D uh, &D collection and I think they use DRM. Actually no, the, the, the fun fact, the uh, the Gamersgate versions of the D&D &D Master Collection with Planescape Tormented and all the likes, those were the GOG versions of the game because there are some GOG files there. Uh, that's a, It's a weird situation, I think uh, CD Projekt may have been, well I know they were the publisher at one point for Baldur's Gate in uh, Poland, maybe they had Right, so they uh, did a thing there with games. But anyway, back to the point at hand. I don't know if I am capable of explaining why DRM free is essential. Oh yeah, uh, Humble Bundle has the Trove and the Trove has DRM free games, but they go poof and if you haven't downloaded them, you don't have them anymore. So I hope you downloaded them. Back to what I was saying. I'm not sure if I can properly explain to people who have not lived in a DRM free world what not only Owning your own games, not being certain that they will be there tomorrow, playable fully, completely, independent of any sort of activation on any device you have, any time of the day, any day of the week, every second, simultaneously throughout the universe, actually means. Because for the past decade we've been accustomed to not owning our games. They are connected to a server, even when they're, they're basically single player games like Hitman, they rely on a server on DRM that is disguised as a service for us. DRM has been disguised to trick us into thinking it offers us something useful. It does not. It never has. It never will be. DRM is breaking a game's leg then giving it a crutch so it can still do its job. Yes, the argument of piracy exists and since digital distribution took off, it's been less and less and the less and less of a thing. Piracy didn't kill GOG instantly. If DRM was the only thing holding back the, as some executives would put it, hordes of unwashed PC players who will pirate our games instead of buying them, thus ensuring that we will never turn a profit, then GOG would have died day one. Somebody would have uploaded, well I know somebody uploaded, I played pirated games from GOG. It's, 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 it's so easy to pirate them that you just end up buying them. There is so little in your way that it becomes more convenient to buy the game than to download it off a tracker. Piracy is not an argument for DRM. You not being able to own your games is why DRM exists. And it's abuse, and it's non-functional, and it's terrible. And even if that's the last 
thing that GOG still does. It is needed. Because when we abandon the idea of games not having the RM, of games not being tied to some server that snoops around your computer because that's what they do sometimes, of basically being delivered alongside malware and spyware and rootkits, then we don't own our games anymore. And when we don't own our games anymore, then all the consequences are you're seeing them always online server side games where you have a ping in your single player you can't modify them any sense of progression or economy is skewed to favor microtransactions basically a nightmare an absolute existential nightmare it's making gaming worse and hey if you're not a fan of nfts guess what um if you own your own game i mean if there's no server to call back to uh, a lot of uh what you call it possibility of putting nfts in it since an nft works on a blockchain that has to be constantly verified that it's it's the thing that it is so keep that in mind even if gog broke your heart with all the things it's done in the past even if it broke its promises as long as it keeps the drm one it is still needed as a beacon as a shining light that oh you you better be sure that a lot of people just want to snuff out I mean, uh, can't really buy gold-plated jets if uh, people aren't forced to rebuy a game constantly just so they can play it. And I don't think that many other companies, many other stores will put that front and center as one of their core beliefs, their core features, their core philosophies. They can't. GOG could because it was small enough and niche enough and handled games that were not relevant to the market at large. But as it continues to move towards that market in the hopes of offsetting the losses that maintaining all those games imposes, the temptation will eliminate Finger. It will amplify, it will get bigger and bigger until at some point, a point that I hope never comes, they may uh, may give in. Thankfully, so far, the CFO of CD Projekt stated that they will focus on a hand-picked selection of games, which hopefully means they won't necessarily have like a bunch of new releases, though that again would cause them to have even less revenue. I hope that means that they're going Going back to the olden days of, you know, good old games, not 60, 70 euro games that somehow still have some DRM in them. CD Projekt itself is profitable, but it's not so profitable that it can indefinitely keep GOG alive should it continue to lose money. This this isn't Epic Games we're talking about with its Fortnite that rakes in millions a day. CD Projekt faced a big challenge with Cyberpunk. It lost some money on it. Still made a bunch, but still lost. And it's probably going to try and... Uh cut some losses in the near future, it can't afford to lose a lot of money for a long time with GOG. But maintaining those old games, that compatibility, developing new ways to make even more incompatible games work on modern systems, that is costly. That is expensive. Not every game is lucky enough to have a community behind it that can reverse engineer it like with Diablo 1 or with Blade Runner and get it to work on modern systems and then have the developer or the publisher because the developer doesn't exist anymore it hasn't for 20 years and get the rights holder basically sometimes just a bank to support the re-release without gog we wouldn't have a lot of absolutely amazing games that just vanish from the world that you can play anywhere everywhere at the same time it doesn't matter they're yours you bought them or you pirated them and maybe you'll buy them sometime in the future like we all did if we lose gog we will well, thousand years of darkness unless somebody else rises to pick up its torch from its decayed husk then it's over the bobby codex and naves the gilmon of the world will win and that's a terrible world to live in i mean it's not like they're losing right now and just be one more step into oblivion is there anything that we can actually do well um hypothetically yes practically no i myself have pledged to myself to buy games off gog for the next year even if it's on super super sale on steam i'm i'm gonna get the gog version well okay i'm not canceling my humble bundle subscription so i am a bit of a hypocrite but when i want to buy a 
game, I will buy it from GOG. Which, uh, you know, that won't offset the two million dollars they've lost. At most, like in a year, they'll get a hundred bucks from me, which won't help. But hey, at least, at least it means that I tried and I can sleep 3% more peacefully at night and feel self-righteous and superior like some asshole, which is why I don't make this some kind of call to action that would be kind of self-aggrandizing and stupid. Who am I to tell you where to buy your games from? It would be nice if we could all buy them from GOG, but that's something everybody decides on their own or are incepted into thinking they reach that conclusion on their own. It's sort of like, like what we do at my day job where you don't come up with new ideas. You try to convince the upper executive people that it's their idea and like, hey, wouldn't it be neat if we replaced those 130 year old water pipes that are still in use? So people, uh, you know, uh, don't get sick when they're drinking the water. But that's a whole other matter. That's uh, that's quack job material, which I, I'm probably going to go back to development if uh, another project I'm maybe not sure attached to will proceed with me attached to it. And when Quag Job finally gets released in the year 2030, I hope it'll be on GOG. Well, if GOG does refocus on hand-picked games, I'm gonna have to incept the people at GOG into thinking it was their idea to sell Quack Job. Good night, folks. Take care. Don't let DRM win.